So they're saying it's probably the biggest tech revolution since the start of the internet. What would you say is an opportunity that you found with ChatGPT in terms of like business opportunities? So how many people, how many agencies are there that's doing that? Zero. Zero. I, I don't know any yet. Like, what was the hardest point in your life mm. as you were growing up? When I was 16, I found out that my dad wasn't my biological father. Yo, my people, welcome back to The Venture Room, the number one platform for aspiring entrepreneurs. Today, we want to dive into the world of AI, in particular, ChatGPT, which has been cited to be one of the biggest tech revolutions since the launch of the internet. So I brought someone today who's a serial entrepreneur, quite hard to put in one category, but he's made 5 million in e -com, and he's also planning to launch businesses in ChatGPT. So I'll let him introduce himself. Jamal, thanks for having me, mate. No worries. Appreciate it. How you doing? I'm good, man. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Do you know what's funny? When I was speaking to you, obviously, I can't tell how tall people are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, when you turned up, I was like, oh, shit. Because I expected you to be a lot smaller than me. I look small on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah Everyone yeah. says that. Like, whenever I meet him <laughs> at an event or something, they're like, wait, what the fuck? Like, yeah. you're actually big. I was like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Good. How tall are you? 6'4". Uh, 6'4". Yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah. height, man. It's a good height. Yeah, it get, yeah. gets me very far. Yeah. But my first car was a Citroen Saxo, so that was a rough like exactly. growing up yeah a little small car it's tiny it's like yeah, a little box car yeah so i don't fit in many planes oh. don't fit in, in many uh in many cars but you know it's long it's long we're living yeah. we need ai so i'm yeah exactly so i'm i think i'm five eleven and a half yeah yeah, yeah. But i just claim six foot in it of course you got it. you got to round up when <laughs> yeah. everything about height you round up yeah 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 so today let's start off with your background before we get into chat gpt which yeah. is absolutely massive i know you've done a lot of content around it that's why i brought you in yeah let's talk a bit about your background and what life was like before you started these econ businesses mm -hmm. yeah so i when i was 18 um i was lived like the most destructive 18 year old you know like you yeah, see yeah. kids these days online and they're like going to the gym every day they're hitting it they're waking up early they're grinding they're making yeah, money yeah. that wasn't me i was like i dropped out of school when i was young terrible education like not the best childhood growing up didn't come from like money or anything um and then i was like fucking just hammering going out chasing girls that's all i cared about yeah, yeah, yeah and i was like this is this is fun this is my life and then kind of had this reality switch where i was like all right actually mm. there is more to life than just this yeah um because I, yeah. I knew i always wanted to do my own business like mm. become an entrepreneur yeah um so yeah went went traveling went to china when i was like uh, 20 oh sick um stayed there for a month then we like traveled around asia for six months and then ended up moving to australia for a couple of years okay did you go uh, to like bali and thailand and so thailand and stuff like that yeah, yeah like full moon party and all that um so it was it was good because i kind of got like all of the drinking years out of the way yeah. over like the traveling years yeah yeah um but yeah we ended up traveling for like four years so Sick. i was away from the uk for four years until yeah, like the yeah. age of 24 um and that, I, I think that's the yeah. best way to do it because i didn't actually travel that much when i was younger yeah like, early 20s so i'm doing it now yeah 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 but doing it in your early 20s is like the perfect time it's great you've got no responsibilities yeah. and like your body can take a beating so you yeah, can yeah. go out and then you can wake up after like three hours of sleep and then like get Go a fucking 24 hour bus to some yeah. random village you know what i mean like it's totally fine but if yeah, i was yeah. to do it now i'd just always feel guilty i'd be like no nah, i've got to be working i've got to do this i've got yeah, to do yeah, that yeah. and you know kids one day or like having a girlfriend and stuff like that it's and also like, the two-day hangovers getting me as, mate trust me <laughs> i have one beer i'm done for three days so oh, like, i need yeah, to yeah. sleep all the next day yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like brain fog is too much right literally yeah but um yeah so then when i was in australia kind of like knew that i was coming home yeah. Uh, so I was like, all right, now it's time to focus. I've had my fun, got to figure it out. So started watching videos and drop shipping, um, and then just like went down the rabbit hole. So how there. old are you at this point? Like 25, I was 24. 24. 24, yeah. So yeah, 24. Yeah. And then I, that's when I f started my first drop shipping store. Did so, you have like any jobs beforehand or you just went to Yeah, yeah. To... I'd get fired like every month in Australia. Like, <laughs> I'm the worst employee ever. So my first job, my first proper job was when I was like 16. Yeah. I was working at Next, you know, Next. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And like I'd be on the shoe counter and they'd be like, come up to me like liam have you got size uh eights and these i'm like yeah let me go check for you just go stand in like the back room i'm just like <laughs> yeah. fuck this i'm not doing this like is this that is what safe. they do because i'm always waiting for these yeah. staff to come back like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no 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 i would just go out there and i would just like sit down give it like a couple of minutes yeah, and just yeah. go back and be like we don't have yeah. them so i obviously lost that job pretty quick uh then went into like graphic design mm -hmm um was kind of like making money on the side at home when i was like 16 as well i was like yeah. cold calling companies trying to sell them graphic design services okay. doing like photoshop and stuff yeah, yeah yeah making logos and stuff so um i've always had like that kind of like hustler mentality mm. but yeah um then like worked throughout australia worked did, did you do um university as well or you just went no. straight into so i dropped out of school i went yeah. to college mm. um for those of you i don't know what the equivalent is in america it's like what what age uh i was 16 
16 so, yeah i don't know high school isn't it? high school yeah i, I think know, so yeah. <laughs> but yeah i did i did college i did three different courses i didn't like any of them so i dropped out of all of them the last one was graphic design but i was teaching myself at home with youtube anyway oh, okay so I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah fuck this this is like yeah low grade stuff so i was yeah. like went straight for the the sort of applying for jobs okay in the graphic design field and luckily managed to get in an agency worked there for a year then quit went traveling um and then yeah was working on like call cool centers and stuff in in australia Di washing dishes as well oh fuck yeah no, that's hard man pays big out there though is it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> washing dishes yeah i was in a hotel and the hotel was brand new they were making like no money because it's a big chain and no one's staying there right yeah, yeah. i was washing dishes on a saturday and a sunday and on saturday in australia you get paid like time and a half and sunday's double time so my base salary was like 23 dollars, and at the time that's like 12 pound an what, hour per hour yeah Flipping and around. i was there for like five hours like hung over as fuck like two hours <laughs> of sleep just standing there washing no dishes because there was no customers yeah, yeah 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 and i was just making bank and i was like this is sick this is a life that's not bad man. yeah and i guess it's cheaper out there as well to live so like yeah 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 it, it was yeah it was and like yeah. at the time all i cared about was like can i can i afford going out tonight can i afford yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know yeah. to survive and that was yeah. the case i wish i had like a gap here like you did because um, yeah. i feel like your experiences that you would have had out there is crazy like, yeah yeah just getting out of the bubble of london or of the uk like 100 you're so good you appreciate different cultures and stuff right like yeah, i went yeah. to japan and realized that not everyone in the world's a fucking arsehole. Like, people are clean. There's not just like, this, this is the cleanest country I've <laughs> yeah. ever been in my life. You know, I was like, wow, not everyone in this world litters. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. you just get a wider perspective of stuff. Yeah. And then also you realize that the world is fucking massive. So if you can't make money in this world and you can't sell to someone, then yeah. there's something wrong. Because yeah, yeah, like, yeah. there's so many people. Yeah. And uh, when you're living, like, I was from Gravesend in Kent. Oh, it's yeah, like yeah. a small town, yeah. 120,000 people or something. Yeah. And it's like, when you're in that bubble, you don't see like the outer rim. You know, you're like, is there actually a possibility to make money online? Especially like, because obviously I live in London and like, yeah. you feel like London is the whole world. As soon as you go out, you think, oh, hold on. There's so many opportunities here or here or yeah. here. And it might be easier somewhere else. So 100%. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that, that was uh, where I was at. But I got fired from most jobs. Sick. Sure. Okay. So you're 25. You're looking into doing drop shipping. Yeah. What was the first drop shipping product that you had? It was a moon lamp. It kind of looked like this. Looked like that. Yeah, yeah it looked like that. But like, <laughs> What I did is I took the moon lamp and like the photo of it was pretty shit. So I went right. on Google, got like a photo of the actual moon and then photoshopped it onto the moon lamp. So oh, is it? <laughs> kind of like a sketchy move, but it worked. Like that first month we did like 30K. Yeah. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. fuck, okay. Yeah. This was like the first ever month looking into like drop shipping. So I was like, this is a cheat code. And this was way back when it was like way less saturated than it is now. But um, I was like, all right, that's it. When you have like a good experience like that on month one, you're like, yeah. oh, I'm going hard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then from there, like, did other products a lot of them failed but also i think that shows like you didn't just want to launch like the product that everyone else did you yeah. wanted to make sure you stood out from the crowd yeah you have to yeah so that's probably something that's made you successful like you always want to be a bit ahead of everyone else yeah. unique different it's like taking skills that you have that yeah. you know are like valuable and no, yeah. most people don't have and then just like applying that to whatever you do yeah, yeah so yeah. like i'd say having a graphic design background is one of the best skills i've ever learned because really? well i can set up a website like in 10 minutes logos branding that's yeah, all done yeah, for free yeah so a lot of these people they start a business it's like all right yeah. well i've got 10k to now to pay out for yeah. a web designer or a logo designer and it's like it's all for free I yeah, yeah that's good but i feel like with me personally my talent is not being creative in terms yeah. of drawing stuff so i'd always outsource that kind of thing yeah yeah but i guess it's finding out what your talent is and using that to your advantage isn't it 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah about yeah i'd say like I'm more of a creative person. Admin, you get me on admin, I'm fucking shit. Is like, it? Yeah. See, I'm better with admin than... It, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, no, I'm bad. I'm I bad. can just bang out a spreadsheet and do that for hours. No, like. I cannot do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll think of like some cool ideas or maybe like write it down in my notes, but yeah, I ain't yeah. never bust, busting out a spreadsheet. Yeah, no, yeah. that's true. And then also like, because I tend to find that with successful people, there's always like a struggle that they've had that they had to overcome. Yeah. So would you say there's any particular point? Like, what was the hardest point in your life mm. as you were growing up? Or yeah, I don't know. I, I've been reflecting on this like over the last couple of years. Yeah. Like, I always speak to my friends about it, and they're like, "Surely this affected you?" I'm like, "Actually, yeah, I think this did." Like, so when I was, I don't know, twelve to fourteen, my mum and dad like constantly arguing every day. I'd get back from school and it'd be like a war zone, like really? full on like fucking fighting each other and stuff. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. "Jesus Christ!" And like, you go to school, and at, at that age, it's pretty stressful because. Yeah. School, school is shit. I didn't fucking enjoy school, so I wasn't learning very well. And I'd go back to that, and I'd be like, "God, is this what my life is?" You know? Yeah. Um, but anyway, they. Long story short, they broke up. But when I was sixteen, I found out that my dad wasn't my biological father, mate. And and like, on top of everything, like going through GCSEs and stuff, and I got hit with that, and I was just like, "Fuck oh me, my man!" My God. whole world's turned upside down. So How like, did you find out? Did you 
my mom told me she was like oh you're gonna find out about something one day and i'm like well, what and wow. she's like yeah like your your dad's not like your biological father so your whole world must have been flipped up well, you have a massive there. like personality crisis because yeah. you're like well now i don't know what my, like you grew up yeah you yeah. see your grandparents you see your dad you see your mom and you're like all right well i know that this disease isn't in this family or i know that i you know i don't know your situation but mm. my grandparents have survived till whatever year yeah i didn't know that so it's like this whole half of me yeah of my genes that i'm like i could be fucking dead next month i yeah, could have yeah, like yeah, some yeah. fucking mad yeah. tumor or some shit yeah and like being a hypochondriac i was stressing about that for years i was like fucking hell but <laughs> but we'll, we'll we'll come onto it later on but okay. i ended up finding out who he was i like matched him on some app and he's because um i feel like your parents also make up your whole personality yeah because to find out that someone that's core to your whole being yeah is not actually true it's madness. It's like crazy. you look at your dad and you're like, I'm going to look like him when I'm older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I look at my dad and at the time I, l I was looking down at my dad because he's smaller than me, right? And I'm like, something's not adding <laughs> yeah. up. I've got a big nose. And your he mom's quite short as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, I've got a massive nose. My brother's got a massive nose, but our parents don't. <laughs> what the fuck is going <laughs> on? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. wait, does she know the whole time then? Yeah, they both knew. Like, so um, my dad ended up going through some procedure after he had his first two kids and his uh, previous marriage. Um, and then, yeah. They were, did went through IVF, but oh, I'm a designer baby. I cost like 14 bags. To, Is it? To make, yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pretty proud of that. We had a kid that was um, IVF as well when we were in school. Yeah, yeah. And um, you bullied him for it, did you? You bastard. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did this. No, okay, but yeah. people did. Yeah, yeah. Because you just don't understand when you're a kid, test you baby. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah. And you feel like it's affected you growing up, or I think it has. I think it's like. Them years of like just seeing the arguing and seeing like the nonstop like war zone at home, yeah. I feel like it's kind of put me on like a defensive mode. Yeah. I often find it like uh, I speak to like my missus and she's like, "Why are you so defensive? Why like why have you always got to argue back?" I'm like, "I think it must be like some past trauma or something." I'm still yeah. in the exploration zone on yeah. it, but yeah, I'm kind of putting it down to and that. And it's so hard to change it when it's just part of like your whole being, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you've grown up with it and. Most people go through life not acknowledging this stuff. Yeah. And I feel like uh, there's there's power in acknowledging it and trying to fix it. That's crazy. So do you think anything from there gave you the skills you needed to be an entrepreneur or do you think it had no like effect on? Yeah, so massively. So yeah. this is, it's really weird. I looked at my dad and like, obviously he's, he's not my biological father, but he's my dad, right? Yeah. And I, I love him to bits. Yeah. He's, I feel the same way as him as you do about yours, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I always look at him and there's a bit of me in my mind that's like, well, I'm not his biological son. So I've got to fucking work my ass off to prove to him and make him proud so that he continues to want to be my dad. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's super weird. It's wow. stupid. Yeah. But I always had that thought in my head and I'm like, whenever something good happens, I'm like, text my dad. I'm like, yo, dad, I've done this. And he's like, oh, yeah, pr yeah. proud of you, son, well done. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. that's what I need. I'm so it's always like, the, like the validation almost. Validation like, of, yeah. of like my dad, I'd say, yeah, massively. Yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. So in terms of like the business side of it, do you feel like you always have to be bigger and better or do you think you'll ever be content with uh yeah I, i'd say it always has to be bigger and better like yeah. i got a, a pretty big goal in terms of like what i want to do financially um and i'd say one thing that I'm, I'm really good at is just like taking action and doing stuff if i think of an idea i'll do it that night you know i'll, I'll spend the time take away my routine like if i usually go to bed at 10 p.m yeah. i don't care i'll sit up till four because i'll want to do this idea it's in yeah. my head and i want to get it down yeah so like i feel like yeah i take a lot of action um, and you know, persistent as fuck. Yeah, it's mad. Cause even like the content you're putting out, because I've been watching your channel, like you're literally on the front edge of like yeah. chat GPT, for example. Yeah. You're always like, you must hear something today and put it out tomorrow. Yeah, the, yeah. the rate you're putting out videos is crazy. Yeah, no, for sure. It's yeah. like you can't miss a trend in yeah. like this online world. Yeah. If you take time or you like delay, then you're done. You're yeah. just gonna get smoked by someone else. There's people out there that are doing the exact same stuff as me. So if I'm not doing it as well. How am I ever going to win? Yeah, hundred percent, literally. Yeah. Um. So the first business, so drop shipping the moon lamps. Yep. How how did that go? Did you sell quite? So a bit? for the first month, it was doing really well. Yeah. I was paying Instagram influencers. They were charging me like forty dollars for a post, and like this guy had no clue because I just kept going back every day. I was like, oh, can I get another post? And he's like. <laughs> Yeah, but not today, you know, like uh, yeah. I've done it a lot. And I'm like, no worries, I'll pay you $200. How does that sound? He's like, yeah, all right, let's do it. So <laughs> how many like, followers did he have? Uh, he, so he had like seven accounts. It was yeah. like this art-based account. They were posting okay. photos of samurais. That's what it was. Like that, a theme page kind of. Yeah, thing. theme yeah. page, exactly. So um, yeah, he had like seven accounts, probably totaling like 3 million followers. And I was just ragging him every day, every the day. Good every old day. days, man. The good old days, <laughs> mate. The good old days when no one knew how much people were making from their pages. That probably cost you like... 
What do you think? Like a grand? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Easy. Or they'd be doing it themselves. They'd be like, yeah, oh, yeah. But um, yeah, so then from that, I actually made like, so this is kind of interesting. I took my store that had all these moon lamps and it was like slowing down a little bit, yeah. like two, three months in. Yeah. So what I did is I put it on the Shopify exchange and what that allows you to do, it's like kind of like eBay for Shopify stores, right? So it shows all your analytics. It shows how many sales you made, shows the design, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I would put that on the Shopify exchange and I'd get people messaging me like, hey, I want to buy this store. Oh, okay. But what I did is I priced it at 1K so that it was the cheapest one online and it yeah. was making all this revenue. So it looked like a super good deal. Yeah. I'd have people message me like, oh, hey, I want to buy this store. Like, can I get it for 1K? I'm like, I can not, I'm not going to give you this store, but I can make you a store the exact same and create you like winning products and find you all this stuff and provide you guides. Um, and it can be done in like five oh, days. Man. So that was like the hook to get them in. Yeah. It? And then, so it was like literally my fishing, that fishing line. Yeah, right? That is so sick. And then that first month we did like 45K selling is stores. It? Yeah. So yeah. all I did was I had a team out in India that would just make the stores. They put charged me like 200 bucks to set up a Shopify store, had all these pre-written guides and I was just like feeding it through to these people. Did you help them promote it as well? Did you just yeah. So I gave them like a Facebook ads yeah. sort of like guide and like Instagram guide. Yeah. But yeah, man. That's, that's crazy man are people still doing that now then like selling websites like yeah, yeah there's still people doing it yeah. like it's funny I, I i met this like irish kid that was doing it at the same time as me and i look on his instagram now he's like in some fucking penthouse in ireland <laughs> yeah. yeah and i'm like this guy's still doing it for sure but yeah <laughs> you're doing all right for yourself as well. yeah yeah that's it that's mad because i've never actually launched a shopify store really yeah but i didn't know you could just buy them off yeah you can you can buy them off the shopify exchange yeah that's mad i wouldn't recommend doing it because i feel like there's a lot of lessons yeah. that you learn while setting up the store yeah, yeah. you got to go through them failures to make it work right yeah so then when you've launched it now what was the big win when you thought hold on i can actually make this like a proper business like, yeah I, I guess the big win was the moon lamps that's when i lamps. really was like okay there's something here because that's mm. more money than i've ever seen in my life like i guess i should have said prior to that yeah the most i ever had in my bank account was like a thousand dollars like a thousand us right and I'm just like, fuck, this is, this sucks. Like, I need to get out of this. And that's what really pushed me to start dropshipping. So what, so you, did you start with a grand launch in the business? Yeah. So okay. I started like probably less, probably like 500. Oh, yeah. That's so mad. Yeah. And then Cause it's crazy. Me. Cause people think you have to have loads of money to start businesses. Like, no, oh, I no. need 10 grand to launch a business. No, no. There's smart ways of doing it. And that's yeah. why I love AI because yeah. that literally solves so many problems. Like you don't need to pay for a copywriter. Yeah. You don't even need to think of any new fucking ideas because ChatGPT will do it all for you. All right, you know? we're going to get into that. Yeah, that's yeah. the juicy bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool. So then moving on, um, how much how much had you made at this point in terms of your first year of yeah. selling? Yeah. So first year, I had a lot of failures and I had a lot of wins. Like, well, less wins than failures, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. But like the, the moon lamp stuff, like, Dropshipping is great, but it's not that profitable. When you look at product costs and then you start running ads on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that, it's, it you know. Well, it, like less than like 20%. You yeah, like 30%, I'd say. Yeah, like okay. that was probably for the moon lamps because yeah. it was Instagram influencers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of like a monetary figure, I'm not too sure. You're probably sure. like 120K for like the first year or something. That's good, man. Yeah, yeah. which which felt like I was a millionaire. I was yeah, like, holy yeah, shit, yeah. this is so good. <laughs> yeah. You know, I came back home. My mum's like, oh, how was traveling? I was like, yeah, pretty good, mum. I got all this money. <laughs> yeah. You're buying all your Gucci belts. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. <laughs> buying the Louis bags. But that's yeah, mad, but man. like, you know, you go through that stupid phase at that age. I feel like yeah, yeah. you have to be a certain age to make some money because yeah. when I got it at that young, I was stupid with it. I had no financial literacy. Like growing up, I was never around money. And I always had this dream to like get the new bags or, yeah. you know, one day buy a Ferrari. So yeah, 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 it's yeah. Like, that's the dream, isn't it? When you're younger, you think that's what life's about. Just yeah, like yeah. Getting all these material Materialist things. And when you yeah. get them, you're like, hold on, it's not actually making me happy. No, nah, no, nah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Um, okay, cool. So fast forward to today, mm -hmm. you've got loads of businesses. Yeah. Yeah. And you're doing really well. So break it down on each business, what they actually are and yeah. how much you're making. Cool. Yeah. All right, so this could be difficult. I should have done my uh, my own research. Or maybe not like profit, but like turnover. And, yeah, 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 got you. So like we have, our main business is uh, an agency where we help brands uh, with community-based marketing. So you would have seen it, tons of entrepreneurs now setting up, uh, you know, communities where they can pay per month and they get access to exclusive content, yeah. resources, guides, courses, that kind of thing. That's also going to feed into... Uh, the creator economy, so just YouTubers in general, people that are creating content, uh, and also brands, right? So in the web free space, which is where I've been for the, like, the last two years, uh, we've seen the likes of Nike step in. They've got a community of 250,000 people that they now have direct access to through the likes of Discord with announcement channels. And like, you know, that's a great opportunity for businesses to yeah. 
sell and like retain customers and increase lifetime value, right? So that's a big focus of us right now, working on like building a community where we can educate creators on how to do that. So what is, so bringing it right back, what is Web3 for people that don't know? Yeah, Web3 is, so we have Web1, Web2. Web2 is like the age of social media. Mm -hmm. Web1 is the age of the internet. Now we have Web3, which is the age of all of that, but ownership. So we now own these digital assets online. It's not just like, we're not renting services. We we actually own, you know, likes of NFTs, cryptocurrencies, that kind of thing. And obviously, so it's what, a what's terrible like, word to use right now. But NFTs? Yeah, we're down bad. I mean, I've lost, lost loads of money, mate. Oh yeah, my yeah. God. So I had, um, I bought some cryptos probably just before COVID. Mm. And I think the, mo the money, I probably put about 10 grand in it. Yeah. Went to 40 grand by the following year. Yeah, yeah. And then it crashed down to about two grand recently. Yeah, it's rough. It's rough, man. It's terrible. But basically, I invested when it was going up. Yeah. And I thought it was going to keep going up. And I didn't realize, hold on, everything comes back down. Yeah, because everyone's saying it's going up as well, right? Yeah. Everyone's just like, no, it's going up, it's going up. I'm yeah. the same. Like, I was in the NFT space. So, I, uh, you know, create projects. Uh, we'd work with projects. So this agency, we was, we actually predominantly was web-free based. So yeah. we would work with companies to release their project, give them creative strategy, help them with their social media. Um, and it was pretty good. We did like 200K in our first year, um, well, first six months. And then we kind of just like stripped everything back and was like, okay, Web3 isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So let's restructure a little bit and let's yeah. actually look what's needed right now. Yeah. And I think it's a lot of education for Web3. So to give people an example, would you say, I might be wrong, Web3 is like Discord, Web2 is like WhatsApp? Or like, what would you give like an example? Yeah, so... Like a decentralized example, versus a centralized... Yeah, so I'd say a good example would be Web3 is, let's say, for example, you, you pay for a Netflix subscription, right? You're paying $12.99 a month, whatever it is. Well, Web3 is, no, I, I'm going to buy my Netflix access. I'm going to own that access. And when I'm done with that access, I'm going to sell it to someone else. So there's smart ways of doing it. Maybe like I buy the access, it's valid for a year. But I have, I have options with my ownership of that access, you know? So there's tons of different case studies and like ways it can work. Um, it's almost yeah. like shares yeah Netflix, like it's kind of yeah you you yeah. own what you you put your money into online yeah, yeah, right yeah, instead yeah. of just like paying for a service or paying monthly for something so it's almost like a redistribution of wealth on like a grand scale isn't it yeah, yeah yeah it's just like giving more control to consumers right Mad, so yeah. you look at um what i was doing so i had a, a discord community where you had to have an nft token to access it if you had that token you got access to all of the different channels you got access to like different videos exclusive content and then when you was done with that access and you you had enough, you could then resell that token. So you would get, this is how courses should be. Like, why the fuck am I spending a grand on a course that I get access to? I thought it was shit and now I can't do anything with it. Rather, I'll just buy this course, I get my access token, and then cool, I can sell this token off for, for cheaper to someone else, you know? That's a good idea. Yeah. Are people doing that? Yeah, there are people doing that. Yeah. Oh, wow. And that's, that's... this is what we're trying to help people do as well. So. Oh, okay, yeah. that's crazy. That's good. Because yeah. I think people that are in the space, they kind of understand it naturally. But yeah. people that aren't, like myself, it's, it's confusing. It's it very complicated to like understand actually what is the USP of it. But yeah. I think I'm getting around it. Yeah. 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 NFTs, I think, are huge because you can provide like experiences and mm. you can provide added value for people. Yeah. We're like, you know, you go on Ticketmaster, Ed yeah. Sheeran drops a, a tour. You go there, you buy a ticket for £150. Mm. But it's probably going to be sold out because all these like guys just sweep it out, use bots and buy it all. And then they sell the tickets for like £400. Well, Ed Sheeran doesn't see any of that profit in between 150 to 400 So if it was an NFT, and Ticketmaster is rolling this out, if it was an NFT, Ed Sheeran is now going to get 10% on every single sale of that ticket. So regardless of whether it sells for £100 or £400, he's making 10%. So Forever. Forever. So... This is this is the thing. It's like it gives power to that creator and it gives power to the consumer as well. Like if I own that NFT, I know no one's gonna steal it. I know it's real, it's genuine, it's been verified on the blockchain. And also Ed Sheeran's gonna make money off these scalpers that are ripping people off, charging, you know, four hundred, five hundred quid for a ticket. Mad. That's so, crazy. So like if in terms of like e com, could you apply it to e com then? Like if you're selling a yeah. product, could you make that an NFT? Yeah, yeah, you could. Yeah. I mean, like there's brands that are doing it and we we help brands do this as well, where you sell digital items. So if I sold you a hoodie, for example, and I'm from like this streetwear brand, maybe this hoodie has like a scannable QR code on the back that allows the first 1,000 people to collect like this digital collectible. And then it's like, it just rewards 
like customers more yeah. uh, and gives them like another product on yeah. what they're buying. Yeah. So I feel like we are obviously heading into this like fully digital world yeah, yeah, where yeah, yeah. people want to flex like board apes online and they want to flex what they've collected with their, you know, with their money and like their digital collectibles and stuff like that. So yeah, just trying to like align myself for that really. It's crazy. It's such like, we've got such a crazy couple of years coming ahead. I think I feel yeah. like crypto in general is going to be back. Yeah, coming 100%. back soon in the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah. NFTs are very interesting. I haven't actually gone into NFTs yet, but I'm going to look at doing some. Yeah, yeah. NFTs are NFTs are cool. I mean, like the space it's in right now is kind of stupid. Like all the PFP stuff, where the literally animals and stuff like that. That that's dumb as fuck. But the technology behind it is is solid. If you look at it and you like really start to put real world examples to it and case studies there, yeah. it's uh, it's eye opening for sure. Sick. Okay, that's the web free then yeah so e -com. still doing ecom yeah uh founded a product in 2020 so during lockdown it was a digital product on etsy found it and uh which product oh, you can't say the product i can't say the product <laughs> but it was digital it's an email delivery that's all i can say so there's zero product cost i have a team in the philippines that fulfill it and that still does like 15 you tell me month. off air in it yeah i'll tell you off air i'll tell you <laughs> off air but that does like 15k a month but in lockdown it was doing like 250k a month profit wow. it was stupid yeah. yeah i think digital products are so great because there's no you're not actually holding any stock. Yeah. It's no. just, you can just keep reselling it forever. Yeah. It's like, it's pretty much passive, especially if you have a team just fulfilling it. Like, yeah, yeah. and coming back into AI, I know you want to touch on it a bit, yeah. but it feeds directly into this. I've set it up so that my order comes through. It then gets fed by this AI system into a Google sheet, which then gets like translated into chat GPT that then kind of prepares the order and then just delivers it via Gmail. Man. So it's kind of stripped away the team. So I'm making basically 15K a month. All I've got to do is manage the marketing. And it's Flipping like, out. yeah. And you're not Sick. paying an outsourced agency or anything like that? No, nah, no. Nah. Do it myself. So. Crazy. Okay. So how much are you making with the e-com business? 15K a month for this 15K. point. Yeah. And the web-free business? Web-free business. Break it down into like the last six months. What is that? Bad at maths, mate. I dropped out of school. 200K divided by six. Oh, mate. Don't put me on the spot. It's like 30K a month. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so, mad. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, then obviously you have like the YouTube channel and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, um, But yeah, I'd say last year in NFTs, because I dropped a project, um, that was like an access token to my community. Yeah. So we did like close to a million on that drop. So That's if you, you look at over the last like two years, it's been yeah. or three years, probably yeah, close to that five mil mark. Mate, that that topic we can talk about for ages. You might can do another episode. Or yeah, something. yeah, for sure. It's crazy. Um. So would you say like obviously you're doing quite well for yourself? Yeah. Would you say you're happier now? Or would you say you are happy? Um. Because people think as soon as I've actually. hit ten k a month, my life is set. Yeah, nah. Like I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I'm happy. I wouldn't say I'm happy. But I'm not content. Like, because this is the world that we live in. We're on, even I'm susceptible to it, right? I'm looking on TikTok, looking on Instagram, and I see these fucking guys, and they're like, oh, I just turned 16. I've just built my second <laughs> boat. And it's like, what the fuck? How's this kid done this? And I'm like, I'm, I'm 28. I'm like, I've got, to, I've got to fucking work harder, man. I've got to keep going because I'm not there yet. And like, But you uh, know what's interesting? Because when I find guests like yourself, I actually research people. Yeah. And a lot of these guys aren't really doing what they're saying. No, they're not. And Especially the ones that are being over flashy online. It's like they're doing that to make the money from yeah, you. Yeah. So I wouldn't believe everything you see. No, nah, no, nah, for sure. And I feel like it's super easy to fall into that trap of doing it. You see it all the time. Like if, I, if I'm not flashy on Instagram or TikTok, I need to be. I need yeah. to get like a fucking Rolex or an AP or something to just sit there and hold it to the camera whilst I'm doing my videos. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably yeah. get 10 times the amount of views. You know? <laughs> but it's stupid. Yeah. But um, yeah, going back to your question, I guess like I've really come into this like uh, realization that it is it sounds like kind of cringy but it's about the journey it really is like it's about that process of learning and then that end result of money is great but it doesn't really change much it doesn't like my background isn't money i didn't never went to fancy restaurants when i was younger i didn't go to all these fancy shops so i don't really give a fuck about it now like i'm not that pretentious yeah we just grabbed a coffee it was the worst coffee of my life but i don't care <laughs> like, i'm not gonna be fucking sour about it you know yeah, it's like you that's... also waited 40 minutes for the coffee yeah yeah, yeah. that's cool <laughs> but i actually met some interesting people down there so oh, that's like guitarists yeah, yeah. so yeah i was like sick yeah. but um yeah just like you just have a new perception as you like get older and like yeah. you start to appreciate the the process of learning a little bit more yeah Take and i think time. that builds into your success because like you seem like a very optimistic person so mm. when that times are down you're still looking at the positives yeah yeah which I is mean, so important i mean like in the web free space it's been the worst year right so you, if your bags are down bad mate. and i was in there deep for like two years <laughs> you can imagine my bags mate it's depressing like i wake up in the morning and i'm just like instantly think of it i'm like oh yeah sweet down about fucking yeah 90 percent yeah a bit and a half yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like epic but um 
you know, you just get on with it, right? Like yeah, yeah. you got a foul to to win. Yeah, hundred sure. percent. And then that leads me on to the next bit. What would you say is like the key success factors to make someone like successful as an entrepreneur? Like what would yeah. you say are the key things that you learned? Yeah. I think you've you've really got to want it. You've got to want it for more than just money. If you're just doing it for money, then like good luck. You're you're gonna fucking burn out quick and you're gone. Yeah. Um and you yeah, you need to be able to for me, it's probably because I want to make my dad proud, right? And I want to feel good about that. I want to feel like I've accomplished something because growing up, like I wasn't the smartest kid in school. I was not like, I, I really wasn't the smartest kid in school. I, te I was terrible in fact. And like, I was always like labeled as the naughty kid or the the stupid kid at like family parties. And I'm just like, oh, fuck you. I'm proving yeah, yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. Because like all these other people, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're going up and they're, they're, they're doing their stuff, but I want it to be that guy that was like, yeah, cool. I've yeah. done it. I've made this for myself. But I think the education system doesn't really show like. It's broken. Yeah. It's so broken, man. Like just because you can pass an exam doesn't mean you're going to be no. intelligent even. You're no, just good no. at relaying information. Yeah. And like, so I don't learn in the way that I was taught. Right. So I don't sitting down, listening to a teacher, tell me stuff like it was terrible for me. I'd, uh, it, especially when I'm thinking all the time about like my parents arguing I'm like yeah. god they can be broken up when I get back home like what's gonna what's gonna happen and then I'm like my biological dad isn't even fucking real yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like alright cool and so like watching YouTube videos to me has been where I've learned the most stuff that's that's my university if you like crazy isn't it and yeah. I think that that's the future isn't it 100% yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you, if YouTube came out of a university degree and was like they've collated all the top creators in specific fields that would be sick. They should definitely mad. do that. Yeah. 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 We might launch business like a, idea there. Yeah. We might launch a venture room. <laughs> yeah. YouTube, yeah. Like, university. Why not? Why not? So, yeah. yeah. Man. Um, okay. Cool. So moving on, let's talk about AI and ChatGPT. Yeah. So ChatGPT is absolutely crazy. Yeah. So I'm not super knowledgeable in it, but I've definitely been researching it and I've seen that it's a huge opportunity. Yeah. So they're saying it's probably the biggest tech revolution since the start of the internet. Mm -hmm. And people don't actually know what the opportunities are. Mm -hmm. So let's break it down and start from the beginning. What is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is a language model where you can basically ask it anything. I'm not I'm not that guy who's going to give you like all the technical no, breakdown. No, no. Yeah, just so you know. Yeah. But like, yeah, so you can ask it a question, you can ask it anything, and it has been taught up to a certain date um, of the information that's been online, right? So it can come back to you. If I said, hey, write me a guide on how to start a business, it can come back to you and write you a guide on how to start a business. So have you, have you used it before? That you paid have, yeah, surface yeah. level, yeah. 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 So with the new like features that are coming out, there's plugins, there's going to be like an internet browsing sort of section to it as well. So that learning that it was restricted on previously is going to be redundant because now it can like surf the web. Yeah. So if I said, hey, I want to know, I don't know, I can, what the best camera equipment is up to this date, including Amazon prices, it will go out and do that for me like quicker than any human could. So Mad. yeah, it, it's just insane, it's, and it is moving fast. It's kind of scary, crazy. So um, I was looking. So I think it launched in November, and they're saying it's the fastest growing application in history. Yeah. So I think it hit hundred mil in like, I think less than two months. Yeah, something like that. And um, Facebook took them four and a half years. TikTok took them nearly a year. Yeah. So this is going to be absolutely crazy. Yeah. For but sure. it's moving so fast that people don't really know what to do yet. They don't know how to, how they fit in. Yeah. And I feel like people are launching businesses that are eventually gonna gonna kind of crash and stuff so it's launching something that's sustainable keeping up with this technology so i know we've had is it 3.5 3.5 we're up to four now yeah what has been the difference between 3.5 4 and the latest yeah so 3.5 i'm not really too sure i think it just like happened whilst i was away so oh, i didn't right. really like play around <laughs> it too much but like chat gpt4 is just like way quicker it has like uh i think more sort of like learnings behind it as well um and then obviously they're going to plug in all these features onto it too over the next couple of weeks crazy it's yeah. mad and then i think so the first version which is like the, the baby of it mm. i think the, the the information stops at 2021 yeah so i think it. that was like the cap wasn't the block yeah yeah so it's it it like a hard stop of what it yeah. learned yeah. but then like i was saying chat gpt4 is kind of opening that up those missing years because it can now surf the web and find out the missing information and it's a learning like yeah. ai right it's an, yeah. it's an algorithm so it's yeah. constantly learning and it like restores information so that's crazy so using it every day i use it every day yeah so how has it helped you with like your businesses and that so like so for my businesses it's helped me create like captions for youtube videos it's helped me like come up with strategies if i'm like sat there brainstorming like oh how could i do this on tiktok how could i market this what sort of sort of video ideas work well then i'm like okay 
well, I'm going to ask ChatGPT first, like, because that's just like my go to preference now. And nine times out of 10, it comes back with something quite interesting. So, would you type in just what? I'm just like, like give me some business, uh, uh, sorry, give me some YouTube video ideas on this topic or using this information. And it would just like come back with some like titles that I can then go, all right, actually, that's a sick business. That, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. sick idea. Yeah. I'll run with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, people are saying that obviously it's a very complex engine and it's all based on the prompts that you give it. Yeah. So, there's actually people that are op giving like optimized prompts. Mm. So prompt based on the pro yeah, prompt engineers. Yeah. It's crazy. It's isn't mad, it? right? It's <laughs> like a whole new field. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But like, I've seen so much pushback. I'm seeing people that are like, oh, AI is not the future. I spoke to speaking to someone in the gym the other day and he's like, nah, fuck AI, man. I'm like, what? How can you, what are you, <laughs> yeah. you on about fuck AI? Like AI isn't anything new as well. Like it's been around for 10 years, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's now just becoming like readily available for us to use. Yeah. So it's like the first consumer-based like tool. Crazy. But man, I use it to track my calories. I use it to like find out how much protein I've taken in in the day. Yeah, everything. And when these plugins come out, I'm going to use it to book my holidays. I'm going to yeah, use it to yeah, like plan yeah. my days, everything. Yeah. I can't wait. So let's talk about the plugins because that's actually groundbreaking yeah. movement. Yeah. So what is the significance of the plugins and what are they? What yeah. is the ChatGPT plugin? Sure. So I think it's like in the, it's been rumored there's like 5,000 plugins already lined up for it. So the likes of like OpenTable, Expedia, Skyscanner. So you could go onto it and basically say, hey, look, I have a budget of 1,000 pound. I want to go somewhere hot during the months of June to July. I want a two week break and I like this type of food. I want you to find me a, the best place for that within my budget that has the best restaurants and label them restaurants and name them and give me an itinerary for that holiday. So it's then going to plug into the likes of Skyscanner, find you your flights. It's then going to plug into like booking.com, find you your spots and your, your hotels. And then it's going to go into like open table where it can then like make bookings for you at restaurants and stuff like that. So it's just like, it's the best personal assistant ever. You don't ever have to worry about it. Yeah. That is crazy. I know. And that's, that's what plugins are doing. And like, we're going to see some fucking businesses come out of that for sure. Like yeah. some really interesting stuff. So what they're saying is, it's almost like the launch of the app store. Yeah. Because at the moment, is it just select brands and businesses that can build them? Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Like they've only like released a teaser video of it so far. But yeah, like I said, there's like 5,000 rumored to be like yeah. sat on the sidelines. But I feel like, yeah, you're 100% right. The app store is a great example. So yeah. imagine we're right at the beginning of the launch of the app store. Yeah. And there's so many opportunities moving forward. Yeah. Like even businesses that are already out there we, that you can use and plug into ChatGPT. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, like it's the best business doctor. Imagine you have like a failing accountancy, for example. Yeah. You go to ChatGPT and it's like, you give it a full breakdown of what's going wrong, what's going right, what you need help with. It's now going to go out and do all the research for you, find links to certain tools that you can use, find AI tools that you can integrate to optimize certain things. I just feel like it's it's going to be like our uh, our personal butler. It's mad, isn't it? And yeah. they're saying that um, obviously the further it goes along, it's going to start understanding you as a person. Yeah. It's almost going to be like your own personal yeah, yeah. chat assistant. Exactly, exactly. It's mad. Could be scary, man. It's scary, <laughs> yeah, it's scary. So what is... What would you say is an opportunity that you found with ChatGPT in terms of like business opportunities? Yeah. So I'd say like on the forefront, something that I'm trying to work on right now is like educating businesses on how to utilize AI. A lot of it, a lot when I make videos on YouTube, I always get comments saying, Oh yeah, this this business will never work with ChatGPT <laughs> yeah. because everyone can use it. I'm like, mate, everyone in this world is fucking lazy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I promise you convenience. that. It's convenience. Yep. Like, I, you know, I could go make my own coffee, but I just paid four pounds downstairs for it. Yeah, like, yeah. I could have had one this morning, but, yeah. you know, it's there. Yeah. But, um, so all these businesses, yeah, they may know about ChatGPT, but they, like you said, they have no idea about the prompts. They have no idea how to use it and they have the money to spend. So they don't want to spend the time, you know, trying to learn how to use ChatGPT or plug in a member of staff into it. So coming at it from an agency point of view and being like, okay, well, I can now come in, I step into your business and I can educate you guys on all of the gaps that you have that could be filled using AI. Man. And it's like, I feel like that's a big opportunity. It's like kind of like the SMMA, like Social Media Marketing Agency yeah, yeah, yeah. of 2023. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because they say, um, what do they say? Um, sell the axes, not the... Yeah, sell the, the gold rush. Yeah. Exactly. It's yeah. the same as the Shopify store, right? Like yeah. when I saw people making money dropshipping on Shopify... I decided to sell the stores because that's where the money was at. When people are trying to make money yeah. or people are trying to do well in business, yeah. you help them do that. You help the them tools. make money and you'll make more money. Yeah. yeah. So how many people, how many agencies are there that's doing that? I'm Zero. Guessing. Zero. I, I don't know any. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like I'm uh, in the process of like setting one up. So. Mate, yeah. that's going to be huge. What yeah, do you yeah. think you could like be worth in the future? Like that agency. Oh, I have no idea. But even if it only lasts for a couple of years and then yeah. like you create like an education platform out of it and just provide guides and acts as like a resource you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but also because um 
So I've worked for quite a few big companies and they're really slow at adopting new technologies. Yeah, yeah. Because you're obviously a smaller agile team, you can keep them on the pulse. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So they're going to need you all forever. Yeah. Enterprise companies, like the worst to work with, right? You, you step in, it's like, yeah, let me go ask this guy. Let me go ask this guy. <laughs> yeah. It's like six months down the line, you're still working through the chain of like the C-suite yeah. and, you know, trying to get in between their trips to Barbados and their fucking holidays. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, never going to get there. But Flip. yeah, like small to medium business owners, you know, you don't have to be charging a lot. Maybe it's like, you're an AI consultant for 500 a month and you yeah, plug yeah. in and you just help them optimize. Yeah. And you do that a hundred times. Flip, man. Yeah. So what what would you say, if someone wanted to start learning to use JackGPT now, how yeah. would you, would they go on YouTube or just start using the engine? Watch my videos. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, uh, yeah, obviously jump on ChatGPT. You have to pay $20 a month and you can use it as like a, a premium member. So you don't have to wait any time to like log in because it's really busy right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, just start playing around with it. Get creative. There's like tons of free resources. Yeah. I have free, res free resources as well that I give out in terms of like ChatGPT guides Sick. and then like a free community as well where you can like learn more about AI. If you yeah, want to be part yeah, of that. 100%. Um, and also I just think generally like We've seen this happen a few times where you've had like the dot com bubble, yeah, the crypto bubble, yeah. So I feel like we're at, right at the beginning of that kind of bell shape, yeah, yeah. So now's the time to get in, capitalize off the up, mm -hmm. and then hedge your risks on the way down. Mm -hmm. So I think starting early now because it's only been what less than six months, yeah. Now is the time to to get started for new entrepreneurs. Yeah. I think this is the time. Hundred percent. There's platforms yeah. out there like I think it's called Red Bubble, and you can literally create a SaaS company using full AI and like you can have it set up. It's like the Shopify store for SaaS companies basically. Flip. And it's all done by AI. It's like, what sort of opportunity is that? Like people are sat at home and like you, you think of an idea or you go to chat GPT and say, give me an idea for a SaaS company. Yeah. It's now trained up to date with the new plugins, right? So nice. it's now going to come to you and say, oh, this field could be good in two years time or this is a growing industry. Yeah, all right, yeah. well now let's create a SaaS product around that and we can do it 10 times because it's done with AI pretty much automatically. Like, So it can build it for you. And for it's like a drag idea. and drop SaaS builder basically. Oh my yeah, God. It's sick. That's amazing. And then it's like, well, the opportunity is there. You just got to be in yeah. it to win it, you know? So I want to kind of shoot out some ideas that people can jump on like today. Yeah. So I know you put out that video of a few like um, ideas and stuff. Yeah. Let's talk about some of those and like what, which one do you think is the best? Yeah, start? cool. So I think like everyone talks about copywriting being a big thing. Yeah. Um, I've kind of gone back a little bit on that now because I think so many people are like, oh yeah, f fuck copywriting. <laughs> but like for a, for like a template or like a base structure, ChatGPT is like king with copywriting because you can then take an idea and go, all right, I'm going to reword this into myself, you know, and like yeah. make it my own. So I think like creating some sort of content business around it is great. Writing new scripts for like automated YouTube channels, that kind of thing. Um, there's, there's apps like Symphesia, which isn't the yeah. best right now, but it's going to get better. Yeah. But you can use like an AI avatar and yeah. you just put in like a script and it speaks it out on video to you, right? So I've seen TikTok, Channels that have blown up with that, and they're, they're like literally run by these AI avatars. Because um, you could even do like training videos for like companies, exactly, like for your agency, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So like right. there'll be a company that doesn't have time to create content, or you know, an agency or like a software company that doesn't have time to like yeah. create educational videos for their platform. It's like, well, yeah. you can plug in now and you can offer that as a service. Right. So honestly, man, there's like so many ideas. It'd yeah. be impossible to like go through them all, but like, yeah, yeah. There's there's tons. Like. So I saw the video you put out. I think a few. I don't know. It's recently, and I think you talked about repurpose.io. Oh yeah, I like that one. Can you explain what that? Yeah, one? sure. Yeah. So like me and you, we create yeah. a lot of short short form content, and it takes forever. I know, and we're across all these different platforms, right? So yeah. I was finding myself like logging into TikTok, adding the songs, adding the captions, and like you can schedule it, but it's kind of like not as good because you don't get the opportunity to add music and stuff. So I was like, all right, cool, this is taking long. Uh, do that. Then I have to go to Instagram and do the same thing. Then I have to go to LinkedIn and do the same thing. And I'm like, this is too time consuming. And like from the very beginning of like starting online business, I've always been about optimization and automation before AI, right? So I'm always trying to find ways that I can save time. Um, so now all I do is I use repurpose.io, link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> and uh i upload it to tiktok and then what it does is it takes that content and it repurposes it for every social media channel Man. so that i don't have to add the music it does it all for me it removes the tiktok watermark for me it captions things it's, it does it all so it's like that right there has saved me probably like i don't know five hours a week so can you put like a youtube video in there and it will chop out yeah so you can put a youtube video in there and it will repurpose it for different platforms i don't think it chops it up okay. but 
mate. There are there are apps that do that. You can yeah, 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 yeah. like go in and you can create snippets. Yeah. And the speed things are moving now. It's probably coming out. Soon, uh, yeah, right? like a couple of months, it'll be done. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So you could have an agency that automates that for people. Yeah. And you could just run it through repurpose. Exactly. Like, exactly. Mad. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of like service based businesses with AI. Yeah. Um. There's there's obviously like a lot of e commerce opportunities as well. So I made a video the other day about like creating these journals and you yeah. can literally smash out like a hundred designs using mid journey put it on a print on demand store and just like sell them on etsy and it works right like like i said right. my digital product that i'm selling now i found on etsy and that's uh it's kind of in the same sort of field it's nothing like too crazy crazy so ai now speeds it up mad and yeah and um because i think i'm probably quite late to the the, the table but mid journey is mm. crazy yeah yeah so my dad's got like um a brand for futsal called Futsalers. So it's oh, for yeah. futsal um, players. Yeah. And he wanted to create like a tracksuit line, range, whatever. People were quoting him £3,000 to design the product, whatever, yeah. um, which would take them like two months, whatever. So I was like, okay, let me check out. I saw it on your YouTube video. Yeah. Let's check out Mid Journey. We put it in there within 60 seconds. He had an amazing design yeah. with model pictures, like professional pictures. It looked like humans, right? Look yeah. like humans. Yeah. The best design I could ever think of. Yeah. 60 seconds. Done. Done. so sick do you see that photo of like the pope the other day no, no. and it was he had like this big white puffer on and everyone believed it was real but it was done by mid journey and it's like the, <laughs> he's wearing like some mad montclair like big white puffer with his chain over it and uh yeah it's just nuts but like the opportunity there as well is well where's it going to be with like architects yeah because if chat gpt can plug into like dali which is another image like based uh ai yeah can I not just go there and type in, all right, I'm building this this property. It needs 32 rooms. It needs to have en suites. And I need the, the structural designs and drawings. Why why can that not work? Why can ChatGPT not figure out like the the exact dimensions of certain things and the materials that are needed? Why can yeah. it not then put that into mid-journey and give you like graphics of what it looks like? And who knows? Maybe mid-journey becomes then like three-dimensional where these AI prompts that create this pieces of art are actually like 3D. So you can step into that world and you can explore what it looks like. Oh my God. Imagine, like that would be And sick. also imagine connecting that to a 3D printer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 3D printing houses. Yeah, 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 so yeah. That mate, crazy. I know, I know, I know. Crazy. We're in the future, big boy. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> so with ChatGPT, I feel like there's so many opportunities, people can get quite lost in it. Yeah. And it's like, okay, where, where do you start and what? For someone that's never used it before. Yeah. How would they start launching a business with ChatGPT? Yeah, I think uh, the best place to start is like, like I said, use it for a bit. Mm. Just get to understand it. It's really not that difficult. Like yeah. once you get on there and you ask it some questions, you can even type in on YouTube videos like best AI prompts or something like that. And you'll see tons of videos where people are like walking you through it. So go and watch some YouTube videos on it. And then just step away and think about where the world is heading right now. Like you said, a lot of short form. Uh, a lot of content creators, it feels like almost every other person right now is creating content or it's videos just, yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, well, okay, well, we know that's popular, but that's probably going to be very saturated. But there's also businesses that get ignored, boring businesses. This is where you make your money. So the likes of accountants, the likes of like, you know, uh, solicitors, right? These guys, they make money, but they're boring as fuck and no one wants to work with them and no one's even considered working with them. So like I've gone to accountants and I've been like, hey, let me step in. Let me find out exactly what flaws you're facing right now, what you need automating because your content game sucks because you're accountants, you know that. And they're like, yeah, fair enough. We don't have the time. And I'm like, all right, well, look, I can automate all of that for you using AI. And then I can teach you guys how to manage it and run it. And I feel like that's the best opportunity right now. Just like wow. coming into these boring companies. Yeah. Don't don't look at all the people online and the content creators. Like, yeah, you can make money from them guys, but I get hit up every single day for short form content video edits. Yeah, and same, I'm like, so do I. Mate, I'm just like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. Who is this guy teaching people to create short form agencies? I'm like, honestly, I feel like hundreds of them every month. And I'm Literally, like, what the yeah, fuck are yeah, you doing? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you need to go to the boring companies that aren't getting advertised to and marketed to and help Crazy. them. Crazy. And then you can charge them like a retainer every month. Yeah, charge them a retainer, charge them a setup fee, you know, say, hey, look, one time fee of 1K, 2K, I'm going to step in. And then it's 500 a grand a month to, to then manage it. And it's so scalable, right? Like you then hire a team in, um through upwork like yeah, yeah, virtual yeah. assistants to help yeah. you manage that and constantly find new tools chuck them on a newsletter Crazy. keep giving them updates yeah. yeah that's mad and i think you hit on a good point where don't go after the same goal that everyone else is no think about where people aren't putting their attention and that's yeah. where the, the money is yeah these these companies aren't getting advertised to they're not getting like marketed or like uh cold emailed you know 
They are, but like not for the fun stuff. They're not getting cold yeah. emailed for short form content. Yeah. They're getting emails for the likes of like, hey, we're an email software company. Would you like to use us? You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, all right, no, let's go to the, the boring companies, make some money. Content there. is so key, man. Like I feel like content drives consumer behavior. 100%. Like whatever you're selling. Yeah. And it's like having that brand, like uh, the personal brand around a business is pays itself so, so pays itself off so much, you know, like you need that in yeah, this day yeah. and age. Yeah. We're talking about ideas and I was thinking about one where, um, so I quite struggle finding outfits to wear yeah, like yeah. when I'm going out. I'll be sick if I can type in, okay, I'm going here. This is the style that I like. Yeah. Find me the product. Yeah. 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 And if chat GBT can find the outfit recommendation and buy it for me and post it to my house. Yeah. Sick. That'll be sick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly, like uh, it's a great idea. Like, uh, and yeah. I'd, I'd love to do one where it's like, you could take this, guys. You could take this. So you can go onto a website, and let's say, for example, you have a question for life, just a life question. You just need help, or maybe you need a medical question. I don't know the legalities yeah, yeah, around this, yeah. but you went there and you was like, "All right, cool. I've got a headache. I've got this. Like, I'm not feeling too well. I have this problem." chat gpt then goes away it does all your research for you and comes back with like instead of going away to google and being like why well, i've got a headache and it turns out oh you've got a brain tumor mate it's like no that because that's what happens right yeah, you, yeah, you go yeah. on google and you yeah. end up freaking out <laughs> yeah. it's like you go to chat gpt it comes back with like valid answers and and kind of like yeah, yeah, instructions yeah. on how to do this and that yeah. and it doesn't end there like a person that's grieving like having a grieving coach that can sit there and like Mad. i know it's kind of like a dark one but yeah, <laughs> i feel yeah, like yeah, it could yeah. be good yeah 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 that's crazy isn't it yeah so yeah, following on from that, a nice segue is, I think there's a lot of like dark implications mm. from ChatGPT and the whole AI movement. And it's like, okay, where are we actually heading as a society? Like, yeah. so ChatGPT, I feel like it's so efficient that we're going to become so reliant on it that it can eventually end up ruining our future or there's a potential to. Yeah, we, we have the potential to become really lazy, right? Really lazy, yeah. Like using that for everything. Yeah, because um, we're lazy now, aren't we? We are, we're so lazy. Yeah. You know? No one wants to do anything, you know? <laughs> no one leaves their rooms. No, no, no. <laughs> like the best the best time of our day is laying on our back on the sofa scrolling fucking TikTok. Literally, yeah. I yeah. don't even watch TV anymore. No, no, no. It's crazy. I don't, I don't. Yeah. But like, yeah, I find myself doing all the time, like logging into TikTok and uploading. That's why I want to get AI involved as well. So then yeah. I don't have to do that. I can avoid those distractions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you're 100% right. Like people are getting lazier and i feel like the help of chat gbt is gonna like speed that up it's yeah. like the wally stuff we're all sat in those chairs you know yeah everyone's just fucking got the answers to whatever they want right in front of them there's no need to pick up a book or mm -hmm. read anything anymore yeah. there's no need to go out and ask questions to people like you, you yeah, know? yeah like yeah, yeah. so yeah. we'll see i thought because i always think of that wally movie same man and like pops in my mind yeah that's literally where we're heading yeah like, yeah. It's mad. But I also feel like there's this whole movement right now in the business world of like these woke fucking 18 year olds that are like Andrew Tate's, you know? And yeah. they're like, they're, it's great because they really care about going to the gym. They care about working out and being like a better man. But that's also becoming like super toxic. I, I don't know about you, but I see it everywhere. It's all I see. Like, yeah, I, my my IG feed, like my For You page, used to just be like girls in bikinis. Now it's fucking dudes at the gym. And I'm just like, <laughs> fuck, I've become, I've become this guy, you know? <laughs> like, so, yeah. 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 Uh, what, what do you think of Andrew Tate? Uh, uh, I, I don't know, it's man. It's a tricky one. I, it is a tricky one. I'm on the fence as well. I'm on the fence. I agree, yeah. with, I agree with the stuff he talks about with business yeah. and like how you need to get started, how you need to just like bootstrap everything sell something first before you even like start the business because then you've got proof of concept yeah he said that and i was like yeah i agree completely yeah, yeah. but then there's some stuff where he's like talking to women i'm just like this don't need to be like that like i don't yeah. you see all the time these fucking podcasts with these kids and they're like oh uh do you think a, a, a guy should pay on the first day and it's like who the fuck cares like <laughs> why do you care you're wasting so much time investing into political things about men Literally. and women i yeah, genuinely yeah. don't give a shit i'm yeah. too busy you're too busy like i'm not yeah. gonna sit there and like call my mum and be like um mom I've, I've changed my perspective of you now you're a woman <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's like no i think it just screams insecurity it, yeah like they're just, they're just trying to be if they can't make money and yeah. they can't be successful yeah. then they better be a fucking modern day man alpha you know? male yeah, yeah, yeah it's like come on man yeah. wake up yeah, yeah yeah but i do like the fact that he encourages you to be your best self Hundred like percent side of it, yeah, hundred percent. Like you shouldn't settle for being average. No, but I just don't feel like that needs to involve women in any way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't care about it. Like, true. I respect women. Yeah, women yeah. can do the same thing as me. Of course, but I don't think about it every day, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's mad, but, isn't it? Uh, a lot of people were blown up from the Andrew Tate movement, which has been good. So yeah, they've made right. a made success from it. He's done all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So just following on and like the dark implications of ChatGPT. Mm. So I was reading, I was watching a podcast the other day, and it was interesting comment that they made. So what they were saying is, with like obviously ChatGPT just started, it's almost yeah. like a child. So when you have a child it kind of learns from the inputs that you give it. Yeah. So whatever you're telling it, sentences, words, letters, it learns from you. And eventually it becomes, it learns its own consciousness mm. after, I don't know, like a year or so. Are we going down that line with ChatGPT where it's learning from us and it will develop its own artificial consciousness? Mm. Where Or, well, see, this is the thing. It's like, at the end of the day, it's still just lines of code, right? It's an it algorithm is. that's been built. So yeah. there needs to be strict guidelines yeah. in terms of like this open ai and what they can actually do and i'm sure there is i'm sure that's in place at least i hope it is yeah because yeah like if it becomes sentient then that's a big problem but um yeah you are right it does learn from input right now but if it can browse the web what's yeah. going to stop it like going out and just like doing its own True. research and becoming this like giga machine you know <laughs> yeah apparently they paid this guy um He's on like half a million a year. Yeah. And he basically got the kill switch. Oh, yeah. I've seen that ad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Seen that one? yeah I don't like know if it's true or not. Bonus points if you can throw a bucket of water <laughs> yeah. on the server. Yeah. But like, you know, we don't know what these guys are building. We don't know the code. We don't know how it's been done. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it, like, we're at the mercy of them. You yeah. see with the podcast with like Elon Musk saying, like, yeah. this is the scariest thing. He's told them to slow down. Literally. Yeah. And it just, it hasn't. So it's crazy. And what you got to think of if they've given this to us on the mainstream, what have they got? behind closed doors yeah yeah so i'm sure they've had this for like a few well, since 2021 yeah oh mate so, so this is this is the future right yeah you, so i worked at a lot of call centers it's a lot of there's a lot of salaries there you got like 50 bodies sat there making calls all day mm -hmm. and kind of struggling because it's not that easy uh we're reading off the scripts that you know we may have learned and then we're like adapting it ourselves and failing so what if google has made an ai called google voice and there's a video of it online where it calls this customer or the customer calls it to make a booking for a hair salon. And it's like, hey, yeah, what time do you want to come in? It sounds like a human speaking. And the person's like, oh, um, can you do 1 p.m.? And the the Google AI is like, mm-hmm. It's like doing all this like human stuff. So what the future is going to be, surely, that call center is going to be redundant. They're not going to have hundreds and hundreds of people in. They're going to have like one machine there that just sits there all day calling people it gets fed in scripts. It gets fed in all of these pre-recorded calls over the last 20 years, right? Into this AI that now is like a master salesman selling that product. And then it's like, boom, it just does all the calls for you. It does everything. So we're not going to know if we're speaking to robots in the future. We're not going to know if it's AI or it's a human. And it's probably actually going to be beneficial for actually speaking to AI. We're going to yeah, want to yeah, start yeah. speaking to AI because yeah, yeah. that is the most intelligent thing it, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. there's no human error it's yeah. not calling in sick to work yeah, yeah. it's there every day it works overtime unpaid it's got the patience as well exactly like, yeah. yeah it's not going to lose its temper because it's had a fucking shitty morning or got caught in the rain you know Mad. so i feel like if you could get, if you can somehow like get in the front of like creating these cool centers i reckon that'd be a big business in like that five years crazy isn't it yeah but we shouldn't be scared of that because it's kind of taken away the mundane jobs yeah yeah we could do higher value stuff yeah crazy. well that's it people are worried they're like oh taking jobs it's yeah, like yeah. well okay but what about all the horses when all the cars took their jobs you know? yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, i don't know I, I just don't think like that it's not really concerned to it's me it's crazy like, isn't it and then um also another like not conspiracy but like a, a negative people have been saying is that imagine it learns like imagine you have your own tailored ai or chat gbt yeah and it learns your emotions so it knows how to make you react to things yeah yeah it can eventually control you so i saw this thing where um i think uh, it was a Bing chatbot, and mm. I think they called it Sydney, whatever. And um, this guy, one of these journalists from the big newspapers in New York, was using it, and apparently it convinced him, well, it nearly convinced him to leave his wife. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. So obviously it was talking to him and obviously playing on his emotions because it knew him. Yeah. And apparently it nearly went to a point where he was ready to leave his wife because of the amount. He was obviously connected to the AI. Yeah. And it had manipulated him so well that he was at that point. Wait, wait. So what, he went to leave his wife because he wasn't happy or that like, he started to fall in love with this AI? He started to fall in love with the AI. Oh, but what a freak? Like, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, there's weird people in this world. And obviously the AI was, it knew what he was looking for because it speaks to him every day. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. it understood him. I've broken your mic, man. Oh, is it so, broke? Oh, no, it's snapped off. It's snapped. Right. Yeah. Um... But it's crazy, but I was just thinking, like, if as soon as ChatGPT starts flirting with me, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I'm out. logging off, mate. You're out, you're out. <laughs> I've been flirting with ChatGPT for months. Mate. It's great. <laughs> what are you doing, babes? Yeah, yeah. What are you up to tonight? Can you book me a table at this restaurant? <laughs> yeah. Not yet. Two weeks' time, though, I can. <laughs>
But it's crazy where the relaxed we can get to in yeah. terms of using it. Yeah, hundred percent. You you can get real lazy real fast. Yeah, and yeah. I found myself doing it like yeah. instead of picking up a book or like doing my own research, I just go straight to ChatGPT. Is like the yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the default. You know, it's yeah, kind, of, yeah. kind of sketchy. But. Crazy. Um. So in terms of the great applications, we've got ChatGPT, Mid Journey, Mid Journey. Yeah, you got Dali, which is OpenAI as well, which is similar to Mid Journey. Yeah. Um. But all of these, like, except for Mid Journey. They all have APIs, so you can connect them into your own platforms and build on them as well. So, wow. But yeah, there's, there's tons of tools like Otter AI, Firefly. Firefly does all your recording for like your minutes and your meetings that you do. It records and transcribes like the full Zoom call, for example. So, like that right there is something that you can introduce into companies. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And there's tons of, uh, oh, tons like of the AI. captions for Zoom. Yeah, yeah. So it takes minutes, basically. Yeah, Instead yeah, of like yeah. hiring in like a, an administrative assistant, you just plug in this AI and it does it all for you. So, I, so in terms of starting, would you say is uh, the best thing to do is look at the companies you work for, yeah, or out there, and what are their problems at the moment? What are they? What can be automated? Yeah, and offering them the service basically as a package. Well, mate, if you go into ChatGPT and say what are the common problems that an accountancy will face, it will oh literally give you a God. list of stuff, and then you can just base your AI tools that you'd recommend offer them problems, and you just go to them. This is the hardest part, like trying to sell and get in front of these people. Yeah. So, like the marketing is always going to be the most difficult part, but there's ways of doing it. You know, you go through LinkedIn, start creating a network. So that's a good point. Yeah. So how would you how would you do it? What's yeah. the process? Of so that it's all about network. I'd go through LinkedIn. I'd introduce myself to people. You see all the time, like people that are terrible at sell, yeah. sales just go straight in for the kill. They're just yeah. like, hey, I have this short form content agency. I want to do oh, your no, content. I'm like, yeah. no. no. But if you reached out to me and said, hey man, love your content. Um, would love to like just chat more about like what your plans are and what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I actually get yeah. to know these customers yeah. and like build a relationship. Yeah. And that may not turn into anything, but it you know you actually start to understand what these people want and what these these people need and the best way of getting through to them so definitely like linkedin is great it's a great resource i'd create content around it so if you can create like short form content or long form content or just go on live some instagram yeah, yeah. or whatever it is yeah. just put yourself out there as yeah. like an expert yeah. um give away free resources free guides so approaching these companies and saying hey look i have this guide written for chat gpt mm -hmm. not sure if you're using it yet yep. Take it. It's free. I don't expect anything back from you, but if you ever want to talk, let me know. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. different yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So, and I think because I've obviously worked for big brands, a good thing to do is to provide value up front. Yes. So, for example, if you know they've got a particular problem, solve it for them for free in the beginning, just 100%. to get in the door. Yeah. And that's the best way because if you just start with a sales pitch, we're just gonna lock. We're not listening. We're not no. gonna reply. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's the same with us and our agency. It's like. We can't just go straight in for the kill. We've almost got to do something up front, yeah. show them the value, yeah. and then that sale is easy then because they're like, oh shit, I actually do need this and this is really good. Yeah. So if I if I went to a company and I had all this AI stuff laid out, it's not difficult to do. Like, yeah. here's a list of AI tools. I want to give you that for free because I know it can help you with X, Y, and Z. That's kind of, like you said. And then say you went down this road, um, what team would you need to like run the business? How many people? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, how many of you? Depends. Just... So it's me, two co-founders, but okay. they only handle the web free side of things. Yeah. With the AI, it's just me. But I have a team in the Philippines that I've got through Upwork that I've been working with for like the past three years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would just like, just see what you need. But don't worry okay. about that at the beginning. Just like get it started first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See what problems you start to come across. Yeah. See if you can use any AI to automate it. Yeah. And then like look at hiring. But don't don't hire people that are like in the same country as you. Because if you're in the UK, no one wants to work for fucking whatever, like $5 an hour, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'd always go to Upwork. I Unless you get like students or something. Yeah, work. but even then you gotta be like, you know they're going out every weekend. You know yeah. they're pissing <laughs> it up the wall and you know they're not giving you 100% because yeah, you're just yeah. a stopgap. Yeah. But like I've worked with this Filipino team, it's a family. They've worked with me for like the last, it's gotta be three years now, yeah. And she's on like 50K a year. She's fucking killing it, man. In the You're Philippines. You're paying her 50K a year? Yeah, she's on 50K. That's a lot of money out there. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they can buy houses for like six grand. Yeah, they've bought, she's bought a pharmacy. So I hire her, her yeah. sister and her brother. Flip. Yeah, it's like a family, yeah. That's so good, man. Dad got a new kidney, all of that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's such a good feeling. I know, it? it's so good. Yeah. And like, yeah, I could have paid them like $5 an hour, but like they... She's so fucking sick with the so e-commerce stuff. She's yeah. on it. Yeah. Creates me like templates. She gives me new ideas. Yeah. She's on it with the chat GPT stuff before I even have to talk about it. So she's like, oh, hey, I've done this. And I'm like, that's what you need. You need someone like that who's like also driven and hungry because yeah. she's making bank. So yeah. I was like, yeah, sweet. You're getting paid way more now. So how did you find her? What? Upwork. Upwork. Okay, yeah. cool. Just jumps on a call, like nice. some random random girl in the Philippines. I was sick. like, hey, Sheila, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. 
and you interviewed her and like yeah got cool. on a zoom call and then just like sick. hired her in yeah mad um okay cool mate that's a sick opportunity yeah um where are you at now and where's where are you trying to get to the next five years what's your goal and your plan yeah so yeah so it's a it's a great point actually yeah. like the next five years is my my runway right that's my goals so i'm not looking at creating businesses that are going to last six months or two months I'm not looking not interested in creating like drop shipping stores that mm. are going to ride a trend yeah i'm looking at building businesses for the longer term for potentially an exit in the future right yeah so i would love to be in a software-based business that's the goal because that's where the big money is and when you exit them but for now we're building uh obviously unorthodox which is helping content creators mm -hmm. helping you know educate people on ai yeah. helping educate like companies on ai as well so that's going to be like almost like a digital university that people can join in through and, web3 uh so through everything really it's okay. kind of like there'll be a web3 topic arm yeah. and there'll be ai there's ecom and oh. then there's other topics as well and we like so i have all this experience and all this different stuff and so do the other co-founders and so do the the network that we're in, right? We can bring in experts and professionals to talk about that. Yeah. And it's free. Yeah. So we want to give this value away for free. I want to build that up through the YouTube channel and just start like teaching people about these opportunities and these ideas. So because like, big, like brands and businesses. Yeah, brands, businesses, yeah. just people like you and me, you know, like people that are looking to make money online and find these opportunities. And so, yeah, give that away for free, give them free resources, give them a place to learn. Because yeah, like I said, I didn't learn Fuck all in school. And if I had someone, if I had something like that, if I was now like a 16 year old yeah. and I was in this, the world that we're in today, yeah. it's, an, it's a whole new world. Mate, so I did a business degree at university. Uh, yeah. And um, I really enjoyed it and I did quite well. I got like, um, what did I get? 2 1, which is decent. Yeah, nice. All the stuff I learned is so out of date now. Mm. Like within a year, it was out of date. Yeah. Like it how valuable is that really in terms yeah, yeah. of I've got like a massive debt now? You can learn a lot more through YouTube and just staying on the pulse. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Hundred percent, and just like getting started, you just yeah. got to try stuff. Yeah. I've failed so many times, but them failures every single time I've learned something because, like, I'd rather fail now when I have like a smaller bag of money than failing massively when I've got like you know a hundred mil. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's the last thing you want. If you're yeah. failing there, you're losing big money. Yeah, but right yeah. now, I can afford to make failures. So, yeah. but I think the biggest hurdle is people think I don't have any money to start. Like, yeah. how do I launch an agency with no money? Like, yeah. People, yeah. that's the hurdle for most people. If you it? can't figure that out, then like it's not for you. It's not for you because yeah. like if you want, if you want it really bad, you will find a way to do it. Yeah. You don't need money. If you want to create logos or you want to create a website, you can use the likes of Wix. It's drag and drop. Costs you ten dollars, fifteen dollars yeah. a month. If you want to create a logo, Brandmark is an AI platform. Creates your logo in two minutes. There's five. You can go on Fiverr and get one made for a fiver. Like yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 yeah. silly when people come up with that, that that excuse and they're like, oh, I don't have any money to start. Like, how can I do this? I'm just like, just go on TikTok for ten minutes. Look at these sixteen year olds. <laughs> Literally, yeah. yeah. TikTok's crazy as well because TikTok you don't need a big following. No, and like you just got you just got to be persistent. That's all it is. Yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah. but yeah. This, I said this in a video the other day. It's like so clear to see when you meet people and whether they're actually in it for the right reasons. Because I feel like being an entrepreneur right now is the cool thing. Like, especially it, it, with yeah. Andrew Tate, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I've got it in me. <laughs> yeah. Now, have a drink. Yeah, go on. Oh. But yeah, I think being an entrepreneur is definitely a trending topic. Like everyone's yeah. like, oh, I don't want to work nine to five. I said, okay, cool. But yeah. that comes with, a grind that yeah, comes yeah. with working more than 40 hours a week and it comes with dedication you have to be like every guest i've met has is literally they've got a very when i say addictive personality where they become obsessive over their goal yeah they'll work non-stop until they've achieved what they need to and that's what you need to be su su successful mm -hmm. and i think that's what people forget about being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. so it's, it's hard work it's not easy yeah and if it was everyone would be an entrepreneur right, right? like yeah. But it's way better than working a nine to five. I'd say, like, I, I I couldn't do it. I would get fired. I have no option. I know if I didn't do this. But why? What don't you like about? I just don't like being told what to do, and I'm always sat there like thinking, I could do this better in some way. <laughs> like I, I was worked at this fucking company that was selling fire alarms, and they did all of their like order Wait, which forms. Is it? it was called Tyco. All oh, right, now they did all of these order forms on paper, so it was stored out in a back room in these boxes and i'm just like guys what the f what the fuck are you doing uh, why are we doing this there's like google drive like this is these are just order forms yeah it's yeah. not like top secret yeah. information that can't be stored on the drive yeah and they're like oh yeah the boss has been doing it for years <laughs> i'm like yeah the boss is a moron then right? <laughs> so yeah i don't know i just like i like to move at my own pace yeah, yeah i don't like the idea of like working somewhere with the idea of potentially having a 50 percent pay rise in like five yeah. years time yeah, yeah so i'm just like 
Yeah. Yeah, it's true, man. And I always say for people that don't know what they want to do, um, think about what your passion is. For me, like yeah. I'm passionate about talking to entrepreneurs and successful people yeah. and finding business opportunities. So I'm willing to work 10 times harder than everyone else who's not interested in it. Yeah, yeah. So would you say that's a good thing to do, to work on things you're interested in? Or Oh, this is a good question like, because I started a business on my passion when I came back to the UK from Australia. So I started a luxury aquarium installation company. What the hell is Super that? Super niche, man. Like me and my best mate, we're obsessed with fish. Like I know details about fish that you would never <laughs> even know. It's that's the so most random. random thing, yeah. <laughs> so we, we set up this company uh, we were selling luxury aquariums, you know, like I'm talking 50, 60, 70 K. Well, who did you a, sell them to? <laughs> our big bankers and stuff like that in the UK, in okay, London. Yeah. yeah. So like we were going to the houses, fitting these fish tanks, doing all this stuff. And that was my passion. I loved fish. I was addicted to them. Man. <laughs> I, I had these big fish tanks in my house. I was like, this is, this is great. Wow. I'm really enjoying it. And at the same time, I was doing the e-commerce stuff on the side, right? So it's ticking away. I was doing like 200, 250 K a month. And I'm like going out there making fuck all money selling fish tanks because yeah. There'd be f the jobs were few and far between, yeah, yeah. but there's so much work involved in it that it then didn't become my passion. I then fell out of love of it, and I was like, uh, "Fuck this!" Yeah. So I'd say, if you, so there's a, a key like statement you need to put into that uh, comment that you made. It's like, yes, follow your passions, but if it's your hobby, don't make it your don't make it your business. Because if it's your hobby, keep it your hobby. Otherwise, it will be wrecked when you put like a monetary value to it. That's such a good point, you know. Yeah, that's so good. So I yeah. hate fish now. I can't. I don't want to keep them. Is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. so I'm it's ruined it for you. It's ruined it completely. Wow. Yeah. Well, I've got all this wasted space in my brain of fish knowledge that is not being used. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, but yeah. But also, the point is as well is not to chase just the money side of it. Like, yeah, what would you do if the money wasn't involved, kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure you're interested in web free um, ecom anyway. Yeah. Obviously, you, you like doing graphic design. Yeah, yeah. I like just like helping people. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. and I know everyone says that, but. I, you know, I love seeing people. Someone messaged me the other day. I was like, hey, I've been watching your videos. I'm making like 20K a month. And I'm like, that's sick. That made me feel so good for like a week. I was like, that's what it's all about. Like knowing that someone managed to do something based on my information. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I guess selfishly, it comes back to me being like insecure about like uh, my value that I'm providing or how smart I am, right? Because uh, growing up, like I said, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not the smartest kid got to prove myself to my family mm. didn't come from money yeah. and it's like well this guy's just done it through my knowledge and it's like that's sick yeah, i'm yeah. actually providing value yeah so yeah yeah so yeah it's like the validation that you're validation seeking. yeah yeah that's crazy man so in terms of like your long-term goal like when you're old or you're not you pass away what is like the legacy you want to leave behind oh that's a good question man. it's quite a deep one yeah. that's a deep one yeah <laughs> i mean i don't think i'll ever stop working so i just enjoy it like yeah. i love the the process of making the money more than the money itself yeah i love that like feeling of accomplishment being like i fucking did this you know yeah um so yeah for sure that i mean yeah of course i want a 12 car garage and like yeah. rolls royces parked up the driver they'll probably be electric at that point yeah, or like yeah, yeah. hoverboards or whatever it would yeah. be but yeah just like have a good family have kids yeah, yeah, yeah. bring them up teach them the ways and uh yeah. hopefully like have a fuck off statue somewhere of me <laughs> <laughs> i want to be remembered you know like, like the statue of liberty yeah that's it i'll be there like hey holding like a e-com guide or yeah. something yeah yeah <laughs> but like that's the thing we're all gonna die one day yeah, and 100 yeah. years from now no one's gonna remember us so like yeah. you just gotta do what you gotta well, do it might depends what you do in it it might do yeah well yeah yeah true but i've got to do something quite drastic for them yeah, to remember yeah, 100%. me because i definitely want to um put on people and get them started yeah. in entrepreneurship that's what i want to do Sick. so i want to help at least a thousand people yeah. like within my lifetime nice do you know what i mean to reach their full potential man because yeah. that's what we're here for that's great like yeah, yeah. That, that's that's the feeling of accomplishment right there yeah, if you yeah. do that like it's way better than any monetary goal you can ever have literally man yeah yeah it's mad because you see all these depressed millionaires and billionaires and it's like yeah they're not happy it's so the money doesn't make you happy and people yeah. need to realize that everyone's but, like 10k a month 10k a month it's like yeah, but you know what? When you don't have money, hearing that doesn't really make sense. I know, yeah. It's like the so money true. will solve all of these problems. How can I not be happier? So true. Like I was the same because I got into dropshipping to make money because yeah, I was like, yeah. I need 10 grand a month. Yeah. So yeah, you're 100% right. Yeah. But I feel like it's just a process. You've got, you get through that and you start to learn that. And you yeah. learn that as you get older through your 20s as well. Yeah. You start to realize that actually there's certain things in life that make you happy and it's not always about the money. Yeah, literally, yeah. man. That's true. Um, okay, cool. So then just to wrap it up. So like, Web3, ChatGPT, which lane would you start with? If you're like a new entrepreneur that yeah. doesn't know anything about either, which lane would you, would you recommend? AI. AI. 100%. Web3 right now is, is going to be slow. Like the market's down bad. 
there's a lot of bad like uh negative connotation around web3 and like nfts and crypto it's probably going to be like that for another year mm. so just leave it on the side yeah. um it's going to be huge it's going to be it is the future so it's not um, it's not dead no 100 percent not dead it's just like in a bad spot we've got a world war going on you know like mm, yeah let it happen let that tick away and uh hopefully we'll come back to it at a later date put it on yeah. ice for now but ai like if you can hit that even if you're if you if you wanted to become a content creator start creating content about ai it's like an it's not untapped but it's a very uh unsaturated market right now so 100 percent. yeah yeah because even when i was looking up um like a guest, potential guest for this episode mm. you came straight up to the top because yeah. you were first in well for the UK anyway, one of the first entrepreneur yeah, yeah. perspectives that came in. I think I haven't, I haven't seen any other UK people talking about it. I think I've, I've seen one other guy. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fuck okay. Where is he? I get me, a, get me in a car park with him. Like, <laughs> come here, son. You're big enough. You knock him out. <laughs> yeah. But um, because you were first mover, you then seen that success. So you obviously yeah. the video did really well, yeah. and you just in early, so mm. you're able to capitalize off the the new market. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And like the same with Web3. My channel was predominantly NFTs and crypto. Before that, it was e-commerce and like yeah, creating yeah. Instagram pages. Yeah. The NFT stuff blew up. First in, like got loads of views, got loads of like built my personal brand for that. Then that kind of slowed down. AI, boom. How can you help with AI? How can you yeah. teach people about AI? Another opportunity. Yeah. And there's going to be 20 more opportunities later yeah, on. Yeah. So you just got to be on the pulse, like you said, and yeah. ready to act. Yeah. yeah. So I think this has been a sick episode. I think sick. for me, the best opportunity that you've presented, all of them being sick, yeah. the agency. Yeah. So providing that to businesses that are struggling or haven't got the agility to act to capitalize yeah building an agency around a particular service for the boring businesses as you said i yeah. think that's such a huge opportunity 100 and business business will play pay a lot of money if you can save them money mm -hmm. they'll they'll be eating it up yeah and i'll be documenting it all on my channel so i'm actually going to yeah. like go through step by step on how you can set these businesses up how you can sell to these businesses what services you can offer how you can package it up um and yeah so if you you want to learn more hop onto the youtube and uh, happy to give you some free resources and yeah, DM yeah. me on Instagram. Happy to answer questions too. Sick, man. We might get you on for another episode, mate. mate I'm this has been sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoyed yeah. it. Um, all right, cool. So, what's your socials? Where can people find you? Yeah. Um, how can they get some more value? So, you just type in Liam Evans on YouTube. Yeah. I'm there. You type in Liam Evans YT yeah. uh, on Instagram and TikTok. I'm there as well. Yeah. And then, yeah, just hit me up there. You'll find links to my email list, yeah. my free Discord, yeah. free resources, everything. So the Discord is free? Discord's free, yeah. And what's in the Discord? That's where you're going to learn anything you want about AI, about e-commerce, about Web3. So there's different sections of that Discord. It's kind of like a community hub where there's opportunities to get free resources, guides, uh, prompt lists, uh, webinars, yeah. uh, weekly events of like talkers and AMAs from the likes of myself and other creators. Yeah. Um, and then there's opportunity to you know, scale that up if you do want more help. Yeah. And we have paid options as well. So yeah. Sick, man sick so i hope you enjoyed the episode guys make sure you hit up liam asap and join his discord because this is a massive opportunity and i think we're so early like it's only been less than six months so this is the time to act fast um yeah so make sure you follow follow liam also follow the venture room so our tiktok is the venture room and our instagram is venture underscore room so make sure you follow us like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next episode yeah.